Good afternoon, everyone. So much excitement today on a beautiful sunny day. It's great to hear. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much and welcome. My name is Lisa Brown. I am a proud alumna of Memorial University and Vice President to Administration, Finance, and Advancement. Welcome to the countdown to the centennial event. We acknowledge that the lands on which Memorial University's campuses are situated are in the traditional territories of diverse indigenous groups, and we acknowledge with respect the histories and cultures of the Beothic, Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit of this province. We are here at the QET, QE2 library at the St. John's campuses, campus, and all campuses are joining in this afternoon. In addition to the St. John's campus, we have Signal Hill, the Marine Institute, Grenfell in Corner Brook, Labrador campus, and the Harlow campus. And there's coffee available at all campuses, and I hope you're enjoying it, and I'll tell you why. I want you to enjoy it shortly. So thank you for coming out and supporting us in this countdown to the centennial. On September 15, 1925, Memorial University College, located on Parade Street, officially opened under the presidency of John Lewis Payton. There were 57 full-time students. Today, we have close to 19,000 students from 121 countries around the world. And what, yes. and 100,000 incredible alumni working around the world, working and living around the world. Throughout this afternoon, I'm going to talk about some fun facts about Memorial. For example, today I had really envisioned this as a wiener roast. Perfect day, it would have been the perfect day. And I wanted that because back when we were on Parade Street and we were starting to build the Elizabeth Avenue campus, students would actually come to this campus and help with burning the brush in order to prepare the land for the buildings and afterwards have a wiener roast. Not very practical for all campuses, so we settled on a coffee break instead. To start us off, I'm going to invite the Honorable Sarah Studley, Minister of Immigration, Population Growth and Skills, and Minister Responsible for Francophone Affairs, and a proud Memorial alumna to bring greetings. Sarah. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here today and bring greetings. I'm also MHA of this area, so I'm probably a lot of your MHAs as well. So don't hesitate to reach out if I can ever help you with anything. Um, and I'm so pleased to be here to bring greetings on behalf of the provincial government. Um, so Memorial feels like home to me, actually. So uh, I know a lot of people here. I used to work with a lot of you. Uh, I did my undergrad and my master's, and I was an elected member of the Board of Regents. Um, and so Memorial also has a special place in my family. Um, my grandfather was from Grand Bank, Roy Studley. Um, and in night, so he went to Mun in 1942, um, but he was working in Argentia doing laundry um, for the ships that would come in in Argentia. And one day he went to work um, and they said, oh, you're not working anymore today. He said, what do you mean? And he's like a really, he was a really hard worker. And they said, oh, your brother just came and quit for you. And my grandfather was furious went home, and then his brother, Max Studley, so my, Max was the oldest and my grandfather, Roy, was the youngest, and he said, uh, I've just paid for your first year tuition at Memorial, here's your train ticket, someone in our family has to go to university. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. So uh, that was like, my grandfather always spoke so highly of Memorial, and then he met my grandmother, and my parents met in Coughlin. Um I met my husband flying back from an exchange, um, so Mon, uh, Memorial is a big part of, of my family, um, and so it's so exciting that we're here uh, to mark 100 years, uh, and I'm so excited to celebrate with you over the next year. This university, our university, as you know, is a memorial to Newfoundlanders who lost their lives during the First World War and subsequent conflicts. And the legacy of Memorial will go on as an institution that lifts up Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. And Newfoundland, uh, Memorial University has such an important part to play in our economy, um, you know, and, and we welcome all of you students and thank you so much for being here. And we, you know, the university would not exist without you, so thank you very much. 
Um, it's an honor to be one of the many who participated in building that legacy. Uh, so I look forward to the 100-year activities and the events that will happen, and I can't wait to celebrate over the next year with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was such a lovely story. And there are so many people who have similar stories about the impact Memorial has had on their family. So thank you for that. Next up, I'm pleased to welcome our president and uh, vice chancellor, Dr. Neil Bowes. Uh, thanks, Lisa. First, I have a fun fact. Uh, Memorial's first major venture to ocean research happened in 1971 with the launch of LORA-1, short for Low Temperature Ocean Activity. LORA was a cylindrical laboratory, eight feet wide, 16 feet long, with two bunks, a sink, portable toilet, stove, TV and telephone. That tells you of the time because it had a TV as opposed to a screen. It was built as described in Luminous at the time, mainly with goodwill and a lot of scrounging. Not sure quality control was top of mind, and I wonder about pressure and safety being an engineer. It was anchored off St. Philip's in 30 feet of water and used for research in engineering, medicine, psychology, and marine biology. In fact, it's believed to have been the only cold water habitat in operation in the world at the time. Two years later, Laura Wong was brought back to the university and placed outside the engineering building as an outdoor museum. It was still there in 1991 when I arrived, but was scrapped when old equipment was discarded in one of our cleanups. I'm really proud that my path led me back to serve as president as we celebrate our centennial. I enjoyed my time at Memorial when I first arrived in 1987, but when I left for Tasmania 20 years later, I had no idea I'd be back. And when the opportunity arose to be become Memorial's vice president research in 2017, I was more than happy to cross the globe once again. And there's one thing I re remember about coming back. How tough it was to figure out the tunnels a second time. I mean, I knew places were supposed to be connected, but when they weren't, it was very confusing. And yes, I got lost. So I've got lots of sympathy for first year students. But coming back has led to where I am today, president pro tempore of this great university. More than 100 years ago, the people of this province came together to fight a war and remained united for a positive common cause, to see future generations thrive together at this university. Next year, we will celebrate our university, a university that honors the past by promising and delivering a better future. It has done that for almost a century, I'm really excited to see what's in store. Thank you very much. Another fact. In 1925, some women, some women in what was then known as the Dominion of Newfoundland gained the right to vote and hold public office for the first time. As I began to research the history of Memorial, I was struck by the number of women who were among the firsts. First scholarship winner, Nancy Frost, who also became the first women, woman marine biologist in the province. The first graduate of Memorial University College, Helena McGraw Frecker in 1926. First graduate of the university, Denise Bonave in 1950, also the first valedictorian. The first honorary degree recipient, Monty Mansfield, who had been the registrar in 1960, and the first PhD awarded in 1970 was to Dr. Helen Bradbury Morrison. Incredible that women led in education in that time. Worthy of celebrating. So 
so much has changed since we first opened the doors in 1925, as captured in this video. Let's take a look. It's a beautiful idea when you think about it, to found a university that honors the past by promising a better future. Yesterday and tomorrow brought together in one unified symbol, a single vision. And that's how Memorial University started back in 1925, inspired by those who came before us and always with our eyes on the horizon. It's been a groundbreaking 100 years, but we're just getting started. And in 2025, we're going to celebrate our past and our future. We're looking back and launching forth. For 100 years, Memorial has helped shape Newfoundland and Labrador, but it works both ways. We thrive because Newfoundland and Labrador shapes who we are. So this moment is for everyone. For the history we share and all the history yet to be made. Beautiful video, thank you. So how do you celebrate 100 years? It's a huge milestone. Well, we're going to celebrate in many different ways. First of all, a story planning campaign. Who are the most notable people in our history? Who helped make a difference to you when you were attending Memorial or when you were working at Memorial? Who built, helped to build Memorial? We want to hear all of those stories. Who are those 100 change makers? So let's hear from you who you think they are. We also established an anniversary fund, and I'm pleased to say that we have funded 35 projects. We had an incredible response, and there are going to be everything from an open house at the Champneys West Aquarium, a beautiful spot to go. You could attend any number of conferences, including an equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism conference, or a public engagement symposium. You could attend a ladies' reading room, attend 10 talks to mark 10 decades of political upheaval and advances, view the work in photos of 100 researchers about their research, watch, look at the work of alumni of the School of Fine Arts, or listen to a musical concert performed at the music school by alumni of that school, help with the celebration garden at the Pi Center in Labrador, or celebrate 100 years of maritime excellence and innovation at the Marine Institute. So there will be a whole program and of activities that will be available for viewing on our website. You can see the list, and I hope you attend them all. Of course, whenever you have an anniversary, you must engage the library. The library is the heart of any community. It's the heart of this campus, I feel. And in fact, every time I walk in here, I remember the times I studied here. My, we all have a favorite spot, right? My favorite spot was in the government documents, and that's where I would go every time to do my studying. Found out much later that our librarian, Diane Keeping, that was her favorite spot too. So we may have known each other at that time or bumped into each other at that time. I'm really pleased to invite Colleen Field, librarian with the Center for Newfoundland Studies, to tell us about a project that they've pulled together for our anniversary. Colleen. Thank you, Lisa. I have a fun fact. Um, did you know Memorial had its own TV station called ETV that started in the late 1960s and that you can find over 3,000 of its shows on the Digital Archives Initiative or the DAI as we call it. I am told that one episode features a very young Alan Doyle of Great Big Sea fame who along with his brother they covered The Boxer by Simon and Garfunkel. 
And while I am on fun facts, here's another one that we at the library are quite proud of. The DAI has over 1.2 million pages of scanned newspapers available, from the Twillingate Sun to the Western Star to the Evening Telegram. Uh, working at Memorial University is something of a family tradition for me. Both of my parents worked here, my dad in technical services and the departments of psychology and chemistry. Um, my mom uh, worked in the health sciences library and the registrar's office. There was a time in the 1980s when all the family, including my two brothers, we would squeeze into our Chevy Impala and head to campus, all five of us. I've worked at Memorial University Libraries for almost 35 years. <laughs> One of my brothers worked with me here in the library, as did my husband, and my two daughters obtained degrees from Memorial, and they worked as library student assistants during their time here. And I fully expect my granddaughter, Clara, to be a future student here. She's only two, but I'm already preparing. <laughs> As you can see, Memorial University is really front and center in our lives, and it always has been. This makes my work in the Center for Newfoundland Studies even more meaningful. I have dedicated my professional life to collecting and preserving materials relating to Newfoundland and Labrador on behalf of Memorial University. And I am proud to say that both the Center for Newfoundland Studies and the Archives and Special Collections Division here in the QE2 Library have remarkable collections that no other library in the world has. Unique and rare materials to access in person and online through the DAI. In honor of Memorial's upcoming centennial anniversary, I have curated a collection on the DAI called the Looking Back Collection that showcases Memorial University through its first 100 years. It is a treasure trove that will keep you busy for hours and hours and hours, and there's still so much more to be digitized. One of my personal favorites in the collection is video footage of high school students making their way up Elizabeth Avenue for the opening of this campus in 1961. Eleanor Roosevelt is close by taking everything in. What an extraordinary day for the province, a dream realized. Memorial's yearbook, The Cap and Gown, from 1930 to 2000, is up, they're all there. So are the newspapers, including the Muse and the Gazette, along with earlier news publications. The reports of the president, dating back to 1925, offer a fascinating history of our development as a university. You can also find every calendar and every convocation program. The S.J. Carew collection, photograph collection, is another outstanding gem. Dr. Carew, who was the Dean of Engineering in the 1960s, and his good friend and colleague, Dr. Hugh Anderson, they captured Memorial uh, during the period of rapid growth of its Elizabeth Avenue through their photographs. From sports teams to ceremonies and everything in between, this photograph collection celebrates the community that is Memorial. Also digitized is the wonderful book, Celebrate Memorial, a pictorial history of Memorial University of Newfoundland. This was produced for the university's 75th anniversary. So you ask, how do you find your way back to the Looking Back collection? So this screen here uh, shows you the library's website. You will see under NL Resources a link to the DAI. It's highlighted there in yellow. Once you hit that DAI link, you will find your way to the DAI's landing page. And you will see a button there called Browse 100th Anniversary Collection in the red. And then when you click on that, you end up here. So that is the, the Looking Back collection. Um, we have created a card for you to take away, and there's a QR code on the back that will take you directly to that page. We hope you enjoy the trip down memory lane as you browse the Looking Back collection and other intriguing DAI collections that I know will catch your attention. There's just so much there, so many gems. And because I am a librarian and I take my job very seriously, I want to refer to a few books that celebrate Memorial's history. That they're not on the DAI, but they are available from the library stacks and also as e-books. We have Malcolm McLeod's A Bridge Built Halfway, A History of Memorial University College from 1925 to 1950. 
Um, we also have the book Creating a University, The Newfoundland Experience, and that was edited by Stephen Riggins and Roberta Buchanan. And we also have Jeff Webb's Observing the Outports, Describing Newfoundland Culture from 1950 to 1980. So I really, really recommend that you uh, just try and uh, find those books and uh, have a good read. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Colleen. We really appreciate all of your work, uh, of you and your colleagues. I also want to note that we have a signature partner for our anniversary, and that is Bel Air Direct. And Max Mercer is here from Bel Air, and we're very grateful to Bel Air for their support. Thank you so much. I'm also here with another alum. Now, Jeff LeDrew, who is owner and creator of Jumping Bean Coffee. And you may have noticed, yes, give him a hand. One of our fantastic alum, he has joined partners with us and created a dark roast and a medium roast coffee. And you get to taste and buy and uh, vote by December 1st what should be the official coffee for the 100th anniversary of Memorial University. Jeff, tell us about your company and, oh, sure. and what your, how you became involved. Okay. So yes, I am an alumni of, uh, I actually did electrical engineering here at Mon. So it was a long way from electrical, uh, electrical engineering coffee, but uh, I got involved in Rotary and we actually developed this coffee for our fundraiser. So our first coffee was actually Rotary Roast. So that same, you know, service before itself, that's the reason why, one of the reasons why we've done fair trade coffee. Obviously, if you look at your products, there's a fair trade symbol. It requires, you know, fair wage, and fair, fair pay, and no child labor, all, those, all the great things about it. We're also organic, but one of the things about coffee, I mean, it fuels, you know, generations of people, but, we were looking for a way to differentiate Newfoundland. In order to do manufacturing here, you got to separate yourself. So we, uh, as an engineer, I said, I mean, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Harper was actually looking at carbon tax. I said, I got to change the way we do this. So we actually took our, our uh, roasting process and did heat full heat recovery. So we actually took all the air, the smoke, and, re and we actually recirculate that air. We can save a pound of carbon for a pound of coffee. So applied engineering, it does work, even though somehow I'm in business, and even though there's still an engineering aspect to it. So, I mean, you can do it here in Newfoundland, but again, we need deeper rooted economy so that we have like manufacturing built into our economy more just than retail. So, you know, like I said, this coffee is a great, uh, a great celebration opportunity. Defend your blend, and like I said, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Defend your blend, I love that. So thank you so much for being here. So uh, drink up, everyone. So now, uh, you know, I have to note that Grenfell uh, is having its 50th anniversary next year. The Marine Institute is having its 60th anniversary this year. And the music school is also having a 50th anniversary next year. And we cannot have a celebration without music, right? And so I'm delighted uh, to welcome uh, two of our students to perform. Performing will be Munn student Jenna Maloney, who's studying a BA in French, and Axel Belgrade, who's doing a master's degree in ocean acoustics. A French-Canadian duo whose music combines traditional Newfoundland and Labrador, Acadian, and Quebec folk music. And if you're ever going to grade the name of a music uh, duo. I think this one gets an A+. Plus. Please welcome Port a Poutine. Thank you. Um, so before we embark on this following story, let me take you back to the 14th century, long before the voyages of John Cabot and his discovery of the rock. Some scholars were made aware that there were fishermen who came over here coming from France, Brittany, Normandy, and even from the Basque country. They came to fish off the coast of its, of its island that's now our host. However, this tale is seldom told, as their stories they decide to withhold. Their fishing habits remained discreet, a secret they kept from the opposing fleet. Um, French fishermen came, kept coming for the following centuries um, and more. And so let us tell you of this, uh, the fishermen of this era, the ones we call les terneux. J'ai quitté ma Bretagne il y a 60 jours de cela 
Pour naviguer des océans vers de nouveaux endroits Et pêcher la morue au large où le vent me mènera Oh et eh oh, car sur ces terres nouvelles Oh et eh oh, où la morue m'appelle Qui est loin de sa patrie, un terne va qui n'est parti que pour gagner sa vie. Je laisserai donc cette île derrière et mon camp dans l'oubli. Oh oui, eh oh, car sur ces terres nouvelles, oh oui, eh oh, où la mort m'appelle. Oh oui, eh oh, car sur ces terres nouvelles, oh oui, eh oh, où la mort m'appelle. Thank you so much. That was so much fun. Um, one of the areas where we've had such incredible growth over the years is the number of international students who have come to Memorial. And our province is so much richer for their presence. We have two dance groups today who will help celebrate that cultural diversity. Now, some of you may remember that in 2023, Memorial presented Bangra dancer Gurdip Pender with an honorary degree. After the ceremony in Corner Brook, he encouraged us all to try a few dance moves. So if you did it at that time and you feel so well inclined, you know, you can hop up and join in, I think. I'm delighted to introduce Newfoundland Bangra, recently formed at Memorial, who will perform with Rhythm Village in their combined performance debut. Take it away.
Wow. So, sign me up. That was incredible. That was fantastic. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I note that our chancellor is here, Earl Ludlow. Thank you, Chancellor Ludlow, for being here, for being for to most of our events, actually. I don't know how you do it. I'm going to quote another chancellor, though. Sorry, not you today. I'm going to quote uh, a chancellor from 1961, the Right Honorable Roy Thompson. And he said, we live in a world of mighty doubt and mighty hope. And those words as, are as true today as they were back then. Memorial was founded on hope, hope for a better future. And we honor the past by promising a better future. I hope that everybody who has come in contact with Memorial shows their pride next year and every year in the incredible impact that this institution has had on individuals, on families, on communities, and this province. Let's hear it for Memorial University. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, defend your blend. I'm going to try it now. Uh, and for uh, the campuses, there is also a nature walk taking place on this St. John's campus. Let's meet at 1 o'clock at the Rose Garden, and we'll view the indigenous uh, garden. Special thank you. It takes a lot of people to put this event together, and I am so grateful for their patience and their knowledge and their work. So let's hear it for all of the people who put this together. And I forgot to bring up my t-shirt, which is available at the bookstore shortly. Andrea is wearing one. Uh, Allison has one. So please uh, sign them up. Thank you so much for joining us. And let's count down to the centennial. Thank you. Thank you.